So hello everybody. Uh, we are at the 26 degree Boho Resort in South Africa and I'm speaking with Janvier Yambushi. So Janvier, would you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Janvier Yambushi and uh, I am a metallurgical engineer, uh, still fresh in the industry and uh, I currently live in Johannesburg. Yeah. So Tell me your thoughts on comminution and, and where did you get involved in it? Okay, my, my thoughts on comminution, I think I came across comminution for the first time at university. I would say the very first year in mineral processing. Uh, so comminution, it was mainly size reduction. We find ourselves for the first time exposed to these heavy machineries that had one single purpose, it was to reduce the particle of the given material. No, it wasn't just about reducing, but to expose the mineral value that we are targeting in our processes. And uh, I came across communication in depth when I started uh, my first job, just fresh out of university. Well, it's a consulting firm that took me in remotely and I was exposed to this other side of communication that the uh, academic world did not expose me to. And it, was, it wasn't just about uh, reducing the size of the particular rock or, or, or mineral. It was, a, it was about all the models that go into it. It was about monitoring the energy that was required for these equipment. It was about understanding the variation of the given uh, properties of the material, be the work index and so on. It was foreign at first because uh, through university what I did was I uh, started at the, a hydro plant, a copper cobalt hydro plant mm -hmm. where I was exposed to everything and uh, size reduction was just something that was brushed off but with the focus was mainly on like leaching, uh, solvent extraction, electro winning and or impurity removal stages and so on. Communication was just, okay, so w what's the size we're starting with and this is the size we need and that's it. But when I got to start with the consulting firm, which is AGD Consulting, oh my God. <laughs> it was a learning process all over again, but I am thankful because now I can look at the mining in industries differently because it's not just about hey we need this rock to reach a particular size but we know how to go from this chunk of rock to a given size but now we know how to use the equipment optimally the models that go into the process and uh, the approach also is important how we look at it what the type of information one needs in order for him to better optimize the crushing and milling circuit so uh, with respect to the university training you got in, in comminution systems, if you could recommend one thing to your professors at university, what would you ask them to add to their program related to comminution? Uh, I would say models, models, and models. <laughs> yeah, because it's one thing uh, most universities do not brush on. Uh, maybe it may be time related because they have to squeeze in these many uh, principles into a few hours of, mm -hmm. of lectures, but uh, students need to be given all the tools in order for them to understand how you can implement a model within a process and how you can measure the, the outcome you're getting from that model. Because uh, modeling is important, that's when you get to properly understand uh, a particular process because it has its own behavior it's different from another mine it's different from another process so if a student is able to understand how models work and how you can take that model and fit it into a given circuit communication circuit it will give the the one modeling the one in, inputting the, the model more control and understanding of the process instead of 
him just understanding the working principle of the equipment, the parameters is being given, this is the size you need to reduce, but when you have a model input, you can make the equipment, you can cause the equipment to perform op optimally. Mm -hmm. So I think what was lacking for my curriculum was mo were models in general. I didn't have that exposure to models, even to modeling, it was just something you will be given a particular process, you just have this simpler equation, which wasn't fully representative of the cognition circuit. And then when I got to be exposed to it, through the, the job, then I had like, it as if I was going back to school all over again. Mm -hmm. Now I had to read more, I had to research more, I had to understand more, and every single parameter, every single variable, had a certain influence on, on the process and it's required an in-depth yeah. understanding of it and just being in that consulting space allowed me to better un understand it because it was focused on, com on communication so it was easier for, for me now to correlate different parameters the effect on processes but I didn't get that exposure from university so I would ask them to implement more models and push students to even think of it that way. A process, you take your parameters, you model it. From the plant, you can, you can create a model that works specifically for your process, for your type of condition. But sad, sad, sadly enough, it's that when you are already in a mining plant, it's harder. Mm -hmm. For you now to say no, we need this one, this one model for this part, this one model for that part, and this one for that, mm -hmm. which is uh, the uh, the 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 reality I wasn't really exposed to, but I'm thankful I got exposed to through the consulting firm. Because mm -hmm. now you would see it, you will realize that okay, this is the model that we're using here, so that you understand better how the energy. Uh, the the energy requirement around yeah. the, the the particular sector than one would within a plant because in in a plant you just know uh, it's not even the power draw that you're trying to understand it's you 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 just ensuring that you get to your targeted size yeah. and and that is it's only later on whenever say for instance your plant is underperforming and so on then you sort of bring in the expert to come in to help ouch ouch yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
and uh, also the carbon in pulp, the carbon in leach proce proce processes and, and, and techniques. And it was, it was just amazing our, as much as it was hydro, with copper and cobalt it's different hyd mm -hmm. hydrometallurgical proce processes, with gold also very different hydrometallurgical processes, as much as we're bringing the, the solid material into solution but we're using different re reagents, re different wor wor working conditions. So those different processes allowed me at least to have uh, the bold approach that I've, I have to a particular mining op mining op op operation. My dream would be also to go into any PGM pro processing plant, mm -hmm. yeah, which is like uh, what you find mostly here in South Africa. So in your work experience at the mines, did you have any interactions with consultants? Consultants, yes, a lot, a lot. Uh, and working in Congo, I think you will always be bumping into consultants week in and week out. You have a consultant who would come just, maybe they have a particular equipment of theirs there, so they'll mm -hmm. come to either uh, a follow-up a, a follow up or a, a maintenance uh, schedule that they, they, uh, they, they need to do on their particular equipment or they'll just come coming for training because mm -hmm. uh, most of the workers need like a, a refresher training or they need to be given more knowledge and understanding of the very process that mm -hmm. they are part of because as much as they are part of the same process every single day uh, in on the process plant you get stuck in a routine it's the same thing you do every single day. It's the same numbers you mm -hmm. find. When the numbers are different, then maybe it uh, it's makes you try to understand why this number. But you know that at the end of the day, we are always within this range. Always, there are always mm -hmm. range, ranges. But when you are given more a broader view, a broader and deeper understanding of exactly what you you are doing. It allows you to approach even your process differently. So you have those consultants who would come in to provide also train, training, and uh, some would, would come because uh, a process plan changes all the, all the time with the ore changing also, and you have to modify the whole process. So they would come in either with a new circuit, a new type of equipment which you all need to learn, mm -hmm. and uh, so consultants are a part of the day-to-day -day running of a normal plan. What I have come to like the most, it, it's this exposure. You, you have the metallurgical work, but you are able to read the process through the data it, it's generating. Mm -hmm. So it was more data, more data, more data, and the design part of it, yeah, and the software that we we've been using all over all the time the segmenting that comes so software I know the spreadsheets mm -hmm. you had to come up it was a lot of data a lot of data all the time it felt repetitive but at a certain moment you realize no it's, it's not just repetitive every single one of them is very different the variations are there mm -hmm. and over time you start noticing the very small variation within the data and you understand that as much as we may have a signal in one process plan, very different from another process, process plan. For a, a young engineer, what would you describe are the similarities between the consulting career path and the operating career path? We are similar in a way we are exposed to the same type of processes, like uh, uh, when one is going on the ground, whether one is in a, somewhere in an office doing consulting work, is that we are all dealing with the same process. We are mm -hmm. all dealing with the same type of uh, data also. Mm -hmm. We are all dealing with the same type of, of material. But then again, our job is, our approach to it is very different. Yeah, so which then brings to the differences between the operating and the consulting. Yeah, yeah, there are the, the difference is quite enormous. Because the guy who goes on the ground, uh, he, he works for longer hours, as much as the consultant also for, for longer hours, but uh, you are now exposed to it. Meaning, uh, if we have to speak of uh, the, the, the hazardous ele element of, of it, I think the guy who's on the ground is more exposed to all the, all the material, all the equipment and so on. 
I am more dealing with the data that you, mm-hmm. are give, you are giving me. As much as I know your process, but I am not there. And for an operator who's, who's left university, what are the resources that they should be looking at to learn more about uh, comminution systems? Okay, for an operator, you need uh, to impress upon your company to be uh, making room for training programs, which are offered by consultants. And you have consultants who are very who are specialized and very knowledgeable in within the field of, of communication. You are exposed to it because an operator would just be there to ensure that uh, the instructions is, is being given are followed. But then again, when they want to understand more, they won't have the time to go back to school. They won't have the time to attend even an evening class. But if a consultant is uh, given a week on a plan to spend time with, with them, it will allow them to acquire the necessary knowledge. Yeah, very good. So for a, a last thought, can you give some thoughts to graduating students? Like one or two things that they should consider as they move on into their career, where they should, where they should spend the last couple months at school really focusing? Okay. Um, for graduate, the first thing I would ask you is to love reading first. You need to love reading because you find more knowledge in it. And also, uh, if there are workshops that are available to you, to you, be part of those mm-hmm. wor- workshops. And there are like engineering bodies and institutions, like I'm part of the Southern African Institute of Mining and Metallurgy. They have workshops and uh, classes. They allow you not just to mingle with people within the industry, but also other students from other ins- institutions. Because yeah. what you're learning uh, at one university isn't necessarily the same as uh, you have at others. So being able also to know what's happening elsewhere is important. So don't just remain stuck into your curriculum. Mm-hmm. Go beyond that. And also uh, have a clear path as to where you really want to go. I need a different type of processes, different type of hydrometeorological process as most of my endeavors were to find even what I read every single day, what draws my my attention is anything that is to do with hydrometeorology. Now it's communication why? because I've been in it for almost three years now and uh, I have come to love it. So if you are a student, as much as you might not know exactly how the industry works, but uh, rub shoulders with people who are in, in the industry. Don't be shy. Go to these workshops. Mm-hmm. They are available. And now with the advent of the uh, with, with the connection with internet, and literally everywhere there's everything online. There's mm-hmm. a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, of understanding. These are like softwares. Most universities don't really offer the luxury of learning a particular software. But then again, as a student, take it upon yourself to learn, because uh, be it even venturing in, into how data in, in general can affect your process as an engineer because you're not just going into the industry with your understanding of how metallurgical plants work, but you got to know how to analyze your data, which tools to use to use and how to read uh, the outcome or how to present your data in general. For you, acquiring a data analytics skill gives you that age. And you can work in independently is is easily and also be open to learning. So, because uh, life is a long learning process, and if you are not there to learn, you will always be lagging behind because there are new technological advancements, there are new discoveries that are happening. You cannot be using the same method in your process when there's an easier. So, or not easier, but a simpler <laughs> way to solve it. And uh, so be on the lookout, know what's out there. And also attending conferences, which I was lucky enough through the consulting job to attend a conference. You see how others work, what they are working on, and it allows you to broaden your network, not just with any type of people, but with people who are really influencing the industry and doing very good work. So learn. Go beyond your school curriculum, be part of engineering societies and and institutions, Uh, attend workshops, 
broaden your network, even ask people, ask for mentorship. It is important. I cannot stand if where I am today if I didn't have you. Most of the time I would ask questions. So whether it's a silly question, no, 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 no. This one, what is this? How about this? How about that? Okay. And I don't just stick to your answers and say, okay, you spoke about this. Now I will go to this now in depth. What does it mean on my side? So there are also papers that are available online, research papers. So take those research papers, read and read and, and read. It is important for current graduates to be encouraged to keep on learning. Just walking that stage and being capped as an engineering graduate is not enough anymore. Now you need to learn because even with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, we, all of us are literally learning. The professionals, the new gradu graduates, the lecturers, we are all learning. Everyone is literally learning and people are expecting to be taught what everyone is learning at, at the same time. It's kind of crazy. But you give yourself to it and it's going to work. I tell people what you need nowadays is just a smartphone and wife. Mm -hmm. And you'll be good. So graduation is the beginning of your learning experience, not the end. It's actually the very beginning because graduation now tells you where to focus your learning, your learning. And having at least a clear path of where you want to take your career is very important. Good, good. All right, well, thank you very much for that, Jean-Vier. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for Pleasure. your time. Thank you.